So, um, you know, congratulations. Thank you. That you have um, successfully uh, get back to the hot seat. So, yes. And um, now, you know, in this, in these, recently there are a lot of problems, and there have always been a lot of problems in Fremantle, and and especially about the uh, drinking problems. Recently, the police are trying to tackle the and the social welfare and everything. So, recently, since the W uh, W A police have made a crackdown on alcohol, and uh, made the crackdown on violence around Fremantle, other parts of the metro metro area, basically. And do you think is enough basically to stop the violence? And what action do you believe that, I mean, what action will you take for the next three years to ensure the WA government basically will do more to avoid the drunken violence and the antisocial behaviour in the, in, uh, in the Fremantle region? Well, um, first thing I need to say is that as the federal member for Fremantle, I actually have no um, direct involvement with the W, I'm not a member of the WA parliament, I have mm -hmm. no direct involvement with the operation of the WA government. Mm -hmm and its agencies, including the West Australian Police. Mm -hmm. um, but I do think that alcohol is a significant issue in our mm -hmm. community um, uh, from a health and from a community amenity and safety point of view. And that's certainly the case here in Fremantle and right across Australia. And so mm -hmm. I think that uh, it, what we, we do need to see some further reform in this area mm -hmm. from the WA government in respect of liquor licensing laws, perhaps with respect to changes uh, with in, in the policy on small bars, mm -hmm. which, which would move towards a more sensible and responsible drinking culture. Mm -hmm. And I have, I have strongly supported Commonwealth decision in the last term of government to remove the excise concession mm -hmm. that applied to Alco Pops, uh, and that has been shown to dramatically reduce the consumption of those, that type of alcohol, mm -hmm. which was specifically targeted at young drinkers. Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, which really exacerbated the teenage drink, mm -hmm. binge drinking pro problem. Mm. Does the Labor Party basically support the light world system? Because recently there are some suggestions from the Green Party. And um, will you encourage the, uh, will you try to encourage the Barnett government to push forward the proposals so the Perth commuters will soon have actually have a travel option? Well, I wholeheartedly support uh, the provision of better and more public transport infrastructure. And I would like to see a second tier uh, public transport mode like light rail mm. uh, developed in the southwest metro area mm. um, so that growth areas like uh, the Coburn Coast can be connected on a sustainable basis to mm. the city of Fremantle and so that the whole community can have the option of reducing car use with all of the carbon emission and pollution reduction benefits that that would bring. Mm. Uh, and as I said before, because I'm the federal member, I'm not directly involved in the WA government and have no influence particularly mm. over them. Um, but, uh, but certainly I, I fully support Commonwealth funding for public transport infrastructure, which is already occurring. For example, the sinking of the Fremantle train line uh, at the CBD uh, mm. Perth end. Uh, but in order for uh, to secure further funding for public transport infrastructure projects in West Australia, it would require a decision by the West Australian Government to prioritise public transport projects as, uh, as infrastructure development priorities. Do you, now, recently the Murdoch Uni, I mean, did say something about the uh, West Australian as basically as a waste king of the nation, and in fact, one of the worst places in the world when it comes to sustainability. Now, I mean, will you try to improve and help in some changes to make Fremantle as the leading example in the country when it comes to environmental issues? When you, well, um, from the time that I was first elected, I've made sustainability um, one mm -hmm. of my uh, core issues to mm -hmm. pursue, including waste management. Mm -hmm. And uh, the Fremantle community has been a leader and is is a leader in in sustainability in many different ways, and just to give you some examples. The SMRC, the Southern Metropolitan Regional Council, mm -hmm. offers a comprehensive um, recycling service, which is, and that's participated in by the City of Fremantle and the City of Coburn. Mm -hmm. uh, the White Gum Valley suburb has the highest take up of green power in the whole Perth metro area. Uh, SunGrid uh, is a Fremantle company that is the largest wholesale supplier of PV cells in Australia. We have Carnegie Wave Power operating uh, out of North Fremantle um, that is producing emissions-free electricity and desalinated water. 
and is operating a commercial scale project off Garden Island. Mm -hmm. And uh, and also uh, there, are, there are other projects underway, including sponsored by the French government. Uh, I would like to see us do more to sponsor our local projects. And in fact, the Commonwealth government has recently given a grant to Carnegie uh, of half a million dollars um, through the Centre for Desalination Excellence so that to, to, to work on its desalination program further. I've also supported uh, Quickstep, which is a, a company in Henderson, uh, which is producing um, carbon fibre uh, technology, uh, which is going to make aeroplanes and motor vehicles much lighter and therefore dramatically uh, improve fuel efficiency. And the common, they were the recipient of the largest uh, climate ready grant from the Commonwealth Government of $2 million last year. Mm. Now, there are a lot of um, basically, there are a lot of heated discussion about the mining tax, I mean, um, recently for quite a bit of time. And what extent do you believe this tax will benefit a Western Australian and Australia basically as a whole? And what do you want to say to those people who basically oppose this tax? I support a mining tax because the largest and most profitable resource companies are not contributing a fair share of the profits that they derive from extracting our mineral resources that we all own. And I think that the industry itself acknowledges this and that's why there's been an agreement between the Gillard government and the largest mining companies to increase the amount of tax that they're going to pay. Now that agreement effectively means a 22.5% effective tax rate. Uh, that applies to a couple of hundred mining companies who are uh, mining uh, coal and iron ore only. And um, the tax only applies when they're earning a profit of more than $50 million. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, I think that the scare campaign that's been run uh, recently about the, the new mining tax is, is, is a furphy mm -hmm. and uh, it's, it's, not, it's not realistically going to affect uh, the mining companies' operations at all. Um, Australia's mineral resources are finite and it, it's only right that um, the exploitation of these resources, which are our common wealth, um, that, that we derive some uh, benefit from that that can be shared by everyone uh, fairly and, uh, and for, to accommodate our future needs and that's why the Commonwealth is proposing to put the, the mining tax um, profits into um, increasing superannuation from 9 to 12 percent into health programs and into infrastructure. Mm. Now, there are a lot of traffic problems in Frio, I mean, regarding to freight trucks heading towards basically the port, obviously. Yeah. And um, do you have any um, solutions for the next three years to improve the situation? And do you believe, basically, the future port for Perth is Konana, which is less, you know, less stranded down there? Well, um, accommodating both freight and passenger car uh, vehicles in and around Fremantle has been a challenge for a long time. Uh, I do believe there are certain things that we can do to alleviate the problem, uh, and one is to uh, increase the amount of goods um, brought into and out of the port of Fremantle by rail. Uh, unfortunately, uh, an incentive that was provided by the previous state Labor government to, to do more, uh, to, to have more freight by rail has been removed by the Barnett government. Mm. Another thing we can do is increase uh, the amount of goods uh, transported by sea. Mm. In fact, there was a parliamentary inquiry by the uh, House of Representatives um, Committee on Infrastructure mm. uh, looking specifically at this issue in 2008. Uh, looking at revitalising the domestic coastal shipping industry mm -hmm. and I made a submission to that in, uh, inquiry and I hope that we will see some reforms in that, uh, in that regard. Another thing we can do is work more efficiently uh, in how freight is moved and, um, and, the movement with, and with the movement of trucks on the road to make sure that they're not operating inefficiently to trans, you know, transporting empty containers. Mm -hmm. um, and in fact, the Commonwealth in its 2008 budget had a freight intelligence uh, review um, so in order to, to try to ensure that we were um, dealing with that problem more efficiently. And I, but I do think there is always going to be a future for Fremantle as a working port. I think the majority of the population supports that and I will continue to support that. But obviously, um, Quinana is also um, going to be growing down there as a port. 
And finally, now Colin Barnett has basically decided to go against the labor health reform package for WA as the, and basically de declaring a separate health system from the rest of the country. And what would you do in the next three years to basically ensure the um, health system in Fremantle will not be affected? And do you believe the Barnett's, Mr. Barnett's current decision is arrogant against the Labour government in Canberra? Well, I believe that uh, the WA Premier Colin Barnett is choosing to play politics rather than consider the best health outcome for Western Australia. Mm. And this is evident in his uh, approach to pay negotiations with low-paid hospital support workers mm. uh, in, in um, this, st this state and also in his um, refusal to take part in the uh, national health and hospitals reform. Uh, which would have seen um, the Commonwealth assume 60% of mm. the cost of operating hospitals in Western Australia. And, and that represents uh, a $1.677 billion uh, injection of, of funds into the West Australian health system, which I think we simply cannot afford not mm. to have. Um, now, Colin Barnett has presided over a West Australian budget which has seen a 50% increase in mining royalties, and yet he's only offering um, hospital support workers uh, a $2 a, um, a day pay increase. That's simply not appropriate or acceptable. And at the meantime, we're seeing hospital ambulance ramping going on, um, mm. and uh, the, the problem is only getting worse. It's not getting better. And yet we have this massive um, amount of money coming in from mining royalties. Where is it going? Uh, you know, who is Colin Barnett supporting? Is he supporting um, people in the community or is he just concentrating on big business mm. and uh, trying to uh, prop up a co coalition opposition in Canberra? Mm. Thank you so much.